We just had our first sighting of Mount Rainier <laughs> for about 90 seconds. It revealed itself from the clouds and then disappeared again. <laughs> Welcome to Mount Rainier National Park. Located about 100 miles southeast of Seattle, Washington, this active volcano rises high above the landscape, towering over 14,000 feet tall. There are five developed areas of the park, with a total of five visitor centers and four campgrounds. In this episode, we're focusing on the south side of the park and taking you to one of the most popular areas, Paradise, where we'll learn about plant and animal life in the harsh subalpine conditions, show you where you can enjoy delicious dining, take a hike to get even closer to the Glacier Cap Mountain, and of course, where to stay to take it all in. What you got there? This is a water bandit. First time we used this was in Mexico because they almost never had threaded water. So we're going to try and hook that up to this spigot over here in order to fill water because there is not a RV water fill station inside this campground. On this edition of trying to fit into National Park Campgrounds, we'll be trying to avoid these obstacles. We've got a rock there, a stump there. Over on this side, we've got a big uh, tree. <laughs> so, see how we do. So far, so good. Good. Okay, good job. Yeah. Good teamwork. It's a dream work. Beautiful sight. Okay, we're a little bit unlevel, so we're gonna come back to right here, and then we're gonna go up on the levelers, and uh, this should be pretty good, and then we'll still have room for the car. So we're gonna be almost perfect. Really? Oh yeah. <laughs> so once we lean a little bit with the slide, we'll be at Man, chef's kiss. Look at us making the site work. Now, uh, if we could just figure out Starlink. <laughs> I would also like to point out that Howard filled the fresh water. Amazing. Okay, we just finished America's Favorite Game, parking, and <laughs> now we are walking up to the visitor center. Um, there was no parking available at the main lot. There is um, a smaller lot that is like, I don't know, Caitlin, what? Five minute walk. <gasps> yeah, so we're parked there and we are on our way to a ranger program, yeah. the visitor center, and we're gonna get the lay of the land for paradise. And we're hoping that the fog clears because we cannot see anything right now. So keep your fingers crossed so we can actually show you Mount Rainier. can't see anything. <laughs> the visitor center has some great exhibits upstairs. This one is really cool. So Mount Rainier was one of the first national parks to allow vehicles. They have license plates showing how far away people traveled from to get here and see the park. This is my first year here at Mount Rainier. So learning all I can about the area, but I'm originally from Pennsylvania, so I know a lot more about the plants and animals over there. <laughs> but I've been out west for about five years now. I hiked the Appalachian Trail in 2019 and then just couldn't go back to working in an office. I was a graphic designer before then. Here at Paradise, at the top of the mountain, we have about two times as much sunlight. A little bit less here at Paradise, Super, super bright down here. Ultraviolet radiation is not great for plants. Sucks that water right out of them. And another thing that we have, wind. So the wind can really lower that growing temperature. How many plants do you guys think are in one square foot of meadow here? 50. 100. 100, 300. It's 83 plants oh, wow. just in that square foot. Size women's eight shoe will kill around 18 plants. So just one step off trail can, can trample those plants. And then I do have pictures of what the meadow usually looks like in the summer and what happens to it whenever we do step off trail too much. So the animals here have adapted to life in pretty much one of three ways, hibernation, cohabitation, or uh, migration. 
So we got our hibernators first. You guys probably saw a ton of these little guys scampering around. Oh, um, so, cool. so this is the golden mantle ground squirrel, and you can tell the difference between them and a chipmunk because they have a little white ring around their eye. People usually think they're chipmunks, but they're not, and they do hibernate. Well, we just finished the ranger program and had a great time, learned a lot about the plants and the animals that survive up here in this very harsh environment. And we have had no luck yet. I don't know if you can see up here, it is still quite foggy. Uh, no sightings of Mount Rainier yet. We watched the park film at the visitor center and they said that there are some guests who just never see it. So I'm hoping that we will not fall into that category. We're here for a couple of days and the weather does look like it might be better in two days. So we're crossing our fingers. In the meantime, we grab a bite to eat. There is a grab and go cafe that has all kinds of coffee drinks and breakfast and lunch stuff. So I got a salad and Howard had a sandwich and a little chocolate tort. We got that as a little pick me up and we're gonna go check out Myrtle Falls now. It's really cool because behind the visitor center there's an entire network of trails and there's a little bit of something for everyone. There are really strenuous trails that you can take up to get closer views of Mount Rainier but then there are all these paved pathways. Uh, so we're gonna be taking one of those over now to Myrtle Falls. What is it? So that's not a chipmunk. <laughs> Isn't that right? amazing? Yeah. If they have white around their eyes. Hello, do you have white around your eyes? Yep. Sure does. Sure does. And that's a what? It's a type of squirrel. <laughs> Somebody smokes. I know. I thought they were chipmunks this whole time. That's why you should do ranger programs. Ready? Yeah. All right. Use extreme caution, Howard. <laughs> this is an extreme trail. <laughs> Here we go. Ready? Oh, there you go. <laughs> well, I don't think you really needed to do that, but. <laughs> so Caitlin mentioned about how sometimes visitors don't get to see Mount Rainier. I can't help but remember that in 2019, we were told that most people never see Denali when they go to Denali National Park because of the same situation. The mountains are so tall, they create their own weather patterns, and sometimes you have a narrow window even in one day where it's actually clear skies enough to actually see the mountain. Caitlin, what did you just see? I saw Mama Deer with the little baby. The baby's got all these spots on his back for her back. <laughs> we got to watch them eating and just strolling through the meadow. It's so pretty. Myrtle Falls is beautiful. Make sure you go to the lower viewpoint so you can look up and see the falls and then come to the top and you can see the stream coming down. And we even spotted a marmot and got to watch him like chomping down. And it's so interesting. We were just talking about how different the marmots look at different places. This one looks totally different than the ones in Glacier and Rocky Mountain. Okay, so I hold in my hand a tiny little huckleberry and Ranger Laura told us that if we find them along the trail, you can eat them as long as you don't step off the trail to get them. So, I'm going to enjoy a delicious little huckleberry. It's kind of sour. Mmm. <laughs> Does it remind you of eating soap berries? Yes, in Alaska. Uh, guinea pig, guinea pig, go! <laughs> go! They're not bad, it's just... Mm. Hi, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Is it like <laughs> Since we can't actually see Mount Rainier, we're going to take you on a little waterfall tour instead. So this is now the waterfalls of Mount Rainier National Park. So it's 0.1 miles down to the viewpoint where you can look back up and see Narada Falls. This also connects to the Wonderland Trail, which is an amazing trail that we learned about from the park film. I think it's 93 miles and has 23,000 feet of elevation change, which is just incredible to think about. That's like climbing and descending one of the tallest mountains in the world. I don't think Howard and I will ever do that in our lifetime, uh, but that sounds amazing. Continuing our falls tour, this is Christine Falls, 
and the MPS guy was kind of funny because the parking lot's really small and it says if the parking lot's full there is not an easy alternative so consider another trail <laughs> <laughs> we got a spot this is why you also should consider going either early or later in the afternoon uh, because sometimes you can have the park almost to yourself there's one other car in this lot beautiful and it's like a 30 second hike <laughs> down to the observation perfect Christine Falls has been my favorite waterfall that we've seen so far, and there's a historic bridge that's perfectly framing it, and it's fun to just sit there, watch the cars go by, and watch the waterfall. Story time with Howard. Welcome to Longmire. It was settled by the Longmire family, and they constructed a hotel called the Longmire Springs Hotel. Apparently they really liked their name. It was called the Springs Hotel because there are mineral springs in this area. Now, it was later rebuilt, and then they also built an annex because it became so popular. Well, in 1906, a competing company built the National Park Inn. In 1916, the newly formed Mount Rainier National Park purchased both hotels. They then proceeded to tear down the original Longmire Springs Hotel, leaving just the annex and the National Park Inn. Tragically, the National Park Inn then burned down. That building is actually the annex from the Longmire Springs Hotel. <laughs> so what you're looking at is not in fact actually the National Park Inn, it's actually the annex to the Longmire Springs Hotel. Wow, <laughs> that's pretty wild. And that's also why it's so tiny, because it's actually just the annex to the old hotel. We just had our first sighting of Mount Rainier <laughs> for about 90 seconds. It revealed itself from the clouds and then disappeared again <laughs> in 90 seconds. Hey, but we saw it. High five. High five. We Counts. saw the very top. On the MPS app, there is a walking tour of the historic Longmire area, so you can learn more about the people and the buildings here in Longmire. This is also where you can find the Nisqually Suspension Bridge, one of the oldest suspension bridges in the National Park System. It's also listed on the National Register of Historic Places as part of the Longmire Historic District. It doesn't see as much traffic as it once did, but because of reduced usage and maintenance from the National Park Service, this historic bridge is expected to be in service for many years to come. We came back up to Paradise and we're here at the inn again. We had an incredible meal in the dining room here. If you have the time to do it, I would highly recommend having dinner here at Paradise Inn. The food was so good. We had one of their specials, which was a sweet spring onion soup. That was amazing. Like the flavor combination was so good. I had a salad. And then for our main entrees, I had a steak that was cooked to perfection. It was a filet and it was perfectly seared on the top and all of the juices were locked in. One of the best steaks I think I've ever had. Howard got a salmon, which is locally caught and it had fresh asparagus with it. And then for dessert, I had a chocolate mousse and Howard had a blackberry cobbler. Then they even have these campfire drinks, like adult after dinner cocktails that were really good. So I had a, a hot chocolate with a peppermint schnapps in it. Just amazing. And the ambiance in there is great. So we would highly recommend having a meal here at Paradise Inn. As you can probably tell, we have not had the best weather since we've been here in Mount Rainier. Everybody that we talked to said that leading up to this point, it had been super clear and you could see the mountain every day. So we were just not having the best luck on our trip right now. But we found out that on their website, they have multiple webcams up at Paradise. So we can monitor the weather. And when we see the mountain start to peak out, then we can hightail it up there and we're going to hopefully do a hike because the weather is supposed to clear today. So we're keeping our fingers crossed. We checked the webcam. There is blue sky. Hopefully it'll be good when we get up there. We made it up to paradise and I'm happy to report the mountain is out. We have seen it. It is magnificent. It is massive. And now we are on the hunt for parking. This is the other piece of the puzzle that we have to try to figure out. Uh, it is Friday of Labor Day weekend. The sun is out. The mountain is out. So that means a lot of people are up here. So. This is the other cross our fingers thing that we can find parking. At this point, we will take what we can get. We found a parking spot at the end of the row. Like if you keep driving past the visitor center, there's a one way road that loops back around and it'll take you back down to the bottom. And so we got a spot here. So it's about a 20 ish minute walk up to the visitor center and all the trailheads. Well, now that the mountain is out, we stopped over at the visitor center, got some intel and a highlighted map. We're going to be taking the dead horse 
trail and hopefully we'll be able to see a glacier. Lots of great shots of Rainier too. I know, I was telling Howard on the drive up here until this trip, I didn't even realize that there were actual glaciers on this mountain. I thought it was just snow capped. So I've already learned a lot. But we were also just talking about how even though we have seen big mountains with glaciers like in Alaska, this one feels different because you get so close to it. Like it's right there. Yeah, there's a more pronounced difference between the elevation of the mountain versus the elevation of this hike and it's very close to each other. There are signs about it at the visitor center and this is another reminder for you. Make sure you bring lots of layers. This is definitely an environment where the weather changes very quickly. As we were climbing up, it's quite steep and so we got hot and we were shedding layers. Now with the clouds coming in, it's getting cool again. So I have like a three jacket system here going on. <laughs> the other thing that's kind of interesting about the Paradise area of Mount Rainier is that there is perfect cell service here. So if you need to make any calls or look up trails or do anything like that, it's great. They have a tower up here and connectivity is awesome. That is our fifth marmot on this trail, plus the one we saw the other day. So we've seen six marmots. They're all out on the rocks right now, just kind of setting themselves. Oh my God, there's another one. <laughs> so what is that? Six on this trail, seven total. So we made it all the way up to Glacier Point and I'm like, where's the glacier? because it has receded that much. That little tiny area right back there is all that remains that is visible from Glacier Point. Everything else is up because this is a receding glacier. It's not an advancing glacier. I kind of think about when we were up in Alaska and we were at Exit Glacier, they had to keep moving the markers. They would put dates like 1929, 1934, and that was where the edge of the glacier was. And here, it's all the way up there. And if you look at the moraine, you can see how far down it was, maybe even 50 or 100 years ago. We made it back down and I am so glad that the weather cleared enough for us to be able to hike up and get even closer to Mount Rainier. It's so beautiful to sit there and take in all of the glaciers and the waterfalls and you can hear the rushing water and the wind blowing. It was awesome. And I will say, I think the way that we went was the best way. So big thank you to the ranger at the desk who told us to take Dead Horse Creek Trail up. That was a much more gradual incline. We came down the Skyline Trail and it was quite steep, so I can only imagine how tough it would have been going up. But either way, make sure that you go up a little bit of a ways so that you can get those incredible views. We also stopped back at Paradise Inn and got some coffees, and now we're gonna continue the loop and I think go to Reflection Lake. Well, we are going on a bit of a road trip adventure today. We are, we're going all the way over to Sunrise which to give you an idea, it's like several hours, right? Yeah, of drive. I think it's gonna take us about an hour and 40 minutes. This is the second most popular area of the park. It's also the highest elevation in the park you can drive to. And right now they're doing major road construction. So a portion of the road that connects Paradise to Sunrise has been closed all week. So we had to wait until Saturday. Otherwise you have to exit the park and go all the way around, which adds a lot more time. So we stayed here longer to be able to go see Sunrise. Wow, it is so deep and so narrow. This is Box Canyon, which is actually a slot canyon we learned from the National Park Service app. That is so cool. said sunrise was the second most popular area in the park well I think that is coming true there are signs that say sunrise is full and it is a two to three hour wait uh, to even get up there we just hit traffic right now they're turning people around I don't even know if we're gonna be able to drive up which is definitely a bummer because this is the only day we've been able to do this so it might not happen <laughs> oh my god <laughs> oh no we got all the way over here too. Holy smokes. 
We decided to turn around and drove over to another area of the park for a great photo op with this Mount Rainier National Park bridge sign, which was still a fun way to cap off our time here. On our next episode, we're heading north to experience the magic of Olympic National Park. It's like having three parks in one with rainforests, mountains, and miles of dramatic coastline. Come along to see why this is another one of our new favorites. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you soon.